Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to an airbrushing for the beginners. Now when you're a beginner and you come into airbrushing, you are wondering what to paint. You start doodling on pieces of paper and you can pick up a lot of bad habits. I find if you just pick an airbrush straight up, you don't know what you're sort of doing and you're just blasting with a trigger, you're not actually mastering that trigger control and that is what you need. It's key to airbrushing to master your trigger, the amount of paint flow, mastering air pressures, paint mixing. You've really got to start from the beginning and work your way up. Don't jump into projects that are too hard and as you can see, the project that we've got on the screen now, this one here, it's a Tom and Jerry, so this is Jerry the Mouse. We're going to be painting this today. Simple piece of artwork. This is like back when I was a kid in the early 70s, is dot to dot work. Now, I found this on Google and I thought this would be a good little video for a practice panel for beginners because you can get in on your trigger control and then you've got something to colour in. It's a kid's type picture, but it'll be good for learning on, I think, because you've got all your references on here. You've got all your dots from one to 108. Now, what I think this would be a good practice thing is, is because you can go from like one to two to three in one dagger stroke movement. You can go up to five in a dagger stroke movement. You can go round and go round about three numbers at a time and create dagger strokes or you can follow consistent lines, keeping a very good control of your trigger and paint flow. So I'm going to take you through this little test panel. We'll go round, we'll line it all out. I've mixed some colours up and then we will paint Jerry and I'll show you a little bit of shading, how you can back off with the brush, go in close with the brush, use a transparent when you want to shade as well, which does help. So a nice little test panel. I've got another piece of paper here so we can blast through with the colours. I'll show you that as well as we go along. Be quite a long video on a simple piece, but I think it's good for a beginner when they're scratching around on what they can paint, you need to practice. And it's things like this that will get your skills up, guys, because you are going in on shading, lines, and things like that. So I'll move the camera around and we'll paint. Jerry, see you in a minute. Right guys, the first thing you need to get mastered is your paint mix. When you mix your paints, if you're using airbrush colours, I'm using Golden Eye Flow Acrylics. Now, if you are mixing your paints and it's acrylic, and it's an airbrush acrylic, but you find it sort of, it struggles through your airbrush, mix it a drop of acrylic to a drop of water, or two drops of water to one drop acrylic. This is a transparent, black that I've mixed up so it's very thin and as you will see it sprays really really nice so that's the colour that I'm going to go round this on it's going to be a little bit fiddly trying to get the camera really close so you can see what I'm doing but what I do is I'll do a few lines and then I'll stick them in a time lapse and you'll see me go round this on a time lapse getting all the lines in we'll have a little break talk you through that bit and then we'll get on some colour and we'll start colouring it in. So the first thing you do, get your paint mix nice. I'm dropping the pressure down to about 10 PSI for this because the SOTAR can run really nice at low pressure. Not a problem. So aim to have your pressure around 15 PSI low because you're going in close on things like this. Drop your pressure down to about 15 PSI. Get your paint mix nice. A, way, a good way of ch checking your paint mix is drop your pressure down to 15 PSI, spray it. If it's spraying nice and smooth like this is, and it's not grainy and spitting, you know you've got your consistency okay. If it's struggling and it looks a little bit grainy and spitty, just give it a couple more drops of water, thin it out, back bubble it, pinch over the front and just bubble back with your water in, mix your paint up and you're good to go. So I'll do a couple of lines for a start. Pull this round as close as I can for you. So we've got one, two and three. So I'm going to hit it that way. And these lines won't be perfect. Okay. 
but it's a good one to practice on to get you with your consistent lines. I've just messed up already. It really does make you control, guys. It, 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 guys, it makes you sort of slow down and control what you're doing. Trying to keep that consistent line going round. So I've done a few lines there, sort of consistent thickness. So it makes you practice your trigger. It makes you dial your sort of painting and it makes you move your trigger back to a certain point and you're aiming to hit that certain point each time. And it's a good one for muscle memory. This will get you your trigger control down, just going around following these lines and working your way around. So I'll stick on a time lapse. I'll buzz around, get all these lines in and then we can do some coloring in. See you in a minute. Right, so in that little time lapse, you've seen me go around and sort of line this out. And as I say, they're not perfect, smooth lines. This is for practicing, guys. So you'll probably beat yourself up thinking, I need to get them better. And you, you will get better. The more and more you practice, it was really good to go in on this and do this because it keeps your trigger control. It was a little bit awkward for me to get position because I wanted to be, be a little bit more sort of square onto the panel. But because I've got the camera right next to me, I was standing and sitting at an awkward angle. But I've gone round the image. So we've lined it out. You've followed your numbers nice and easy. Now we're going to colour it in. So we've got a reference. That's Jerry there. So we've got a few colours. We've got a red that's on the tongue. And then it's sort of like a deeper red here on this piece. We've got like a brown colour on the outer part of the body. Bit of sort of pink on the ear. white on the centers of the eyes so they're white already You've got the blacks for the centers and there's a little highlight on his nose that we can drop in so quite simple i've got some colors they're not exact to the reference but you can paint it the colors you want to paint it so when you're shading just drop a little bit of paint in here when it comes to shading and coloring things in most people tend to go straight up to the piece and they just start to do like lines like this and or they tend to draw with it and do this and keep the trigger down and do this and what you're getting when you do that you're getting a build up and a build up at the end of each stroke going backwards and forwards if you aim to use your dagger technique where you can feather out the paint and feather in the paint and just work your trigger like that, you will tend to shade in a lot better when it comes to like painting, painting and colouring things in like this. This is a very, very thin paint. You go in nice and light, use your dagger stroke technique Keep your distance. I'm about three or four inches away. I'm putting minimal paint down and I'm just feathering the trigger and you can get a nice soft tone. Like that. I'm just using dagger text, dagger strokes, but I'm moving to the shapes of the picture. I've got the air pressure low, so you're not getting loads and loads of overspray. There will be a little bit of overspray on this, but not a tremendous amount. And you can see how that's all sort of even one colour, because I'm going in nice and light, and I'm not going for 
full opaque straight away. I'm just building the colours up. And that's the best thing you can do when you do airbrushing is to go in really light, always go in light. And you can always add more paint. If you go in too heavy too quick, you can just make a real mess of it. So nice and light. Like that. Just using dagger stroke techniques, just rocking the trigger. I'm not keeping the paint fully on. I'm just feathering it out. If you come up to sharp pieces in your artwork and you need to just get a sort of sharp line, these hand shields are really good. So we can just put that against the eye like that and just aim off the shield and that will sharpen that line up for you. Follow the shape round like that and just work off the shield still going in light using light dagger dagger strokes now you can go a bit closer and just do some more dagger strokes and just start to make it look a little bit more 3d It's all about going in light guys, keep it nice and light and then just work it darker. Like that. And I think it's a good one to practice colouring things in. You can get colouring books and things like that, but I think doing it this way with the dot to dot, you're actually learning how to do lines go round your piece. Then you can start colouring it in. Start building it up now. And this will get you your trigger control down for when you're shading, your distance, keeping your distance nice and light, gets you practicing the trigger movement. So that'll do for the first colour. We've got a lighter colour because the centre of his chest is a little bit lighter. The same again, nice and light, dagger strokes only. That colour goes in here. And around the bottom of the mouth. And that's where I made a mistake from the dot to dot. So a very simple picture, but it gets you practicing your soft shading. I've got the third colour, which is like a pink for the ear. Now 
we'll use the shield. We'll just shield off that bit there. I've kept this nice and light, I've not gone sort of full opaque. Nice and light. As this is like copy paper, it's very thin, so it just makes you go in lighter, because if you hit it too heavy, too quick, it'll just really wet the paper up. Quick blast through. Now we've got a red on the center of the mouth. Dagger strokes again. A little bit more control. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of black to that mix. Just darken that red out. Give the colour here. Now Quick blast through. So that's sort of the first pass on the colour. Now I'm just going to drop shading grey in this. This is a transparent. And we'll just work a little bit of this in. Bottoms of the arms, around the bottoms of the legs. A little bit here, a bit on the arm there. Do a little drop shadow on his feet. That'll do for that bit of shading. Now we we'll jump onto some white. As I say, make the picture your own. Doodle. That's what it's about. It's a bit of practice. We'll have a little bit of highlighting. This paint is really, really grainy. You can hear it. Yeah. Little bit on the chest. really wetting this paper up but you get the gist you can go around now and just add your highlights where you want them
So a nice little simple one, practice one guys. If you're a beginner and you are struggling for things to paint, just jump onto Google, type in Dr. Dot Artwork. There is loads of it from things like this to really, really detailed pieces. So that's just a simple piece done. And as you can see, it's really wetted that up because it's a very thin paper. If you print it out into something a little bit thicker that's got a bit more body to it, you can start really putting the paint down on there. But as this is a test panel on a piece of copy thin A4, it just gives you a look into what you can practice on. And it just hones your skills in. It gets you practicing your shading. You can start using shields and going in, holding up to shields like the bits around the eyes, like that. And you can just shade off of these shields to sharpen it up. It just gets you using different techniques, moving with your brush, not being sort of static. You see now I went around there with the shading nice and light back off and just use your dagger stroke technique where you're feathering in the paint in and out and work if you start to do a shade just overlap it like 50 percent start moving with it so you see the tone go down nice and even and soft and that's what it's about so i hope you've enjoyed this little video on jerry Real simple dot to dot piece, but it will help you get your trigger control down, guys, and that's what it's about. So don't forget, if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe, press that notification if you're liking the content, and I will see you in tomorrow's video, guys, when we move on with the prep stages and the artwork projecting up. I'm going to show you how to project some artwork up and stuff like that on the Lexus engine bay that we're doing. So that's a detailed artwork. So if you want to see a little bit more custom paint stuff, I'll leave you with some videos up now that you can click over and have a watch if you're getting into the channel. And I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Cheers.